Hello, my name is Dave Johnson from Cambium Networks. Today I will be talking about the PMP450B High Gain Subscriber Unit. This product supports frequencies in the range of 4.9 to 5.9 GHz and is capable of providing 250 megabits per second aggregate throughput in a 40 MHz channel. It also features an IP67 sealed cable mount. As part of this video, I will be covering the PMP450B out-of-the-box components, physical features of the radio, preparing for installation, and installation of the PMP450B subscriber unit. The PMP450B high gain subscriber unit is shipped as a four pack containing four individual radios in one box. Let's begin by looking at the components that come as part of the PMP450B. The box contains one of the following for each radio. A center feed tube, a reflector dish, a rear mounting bracket, a sealed cover with a cable gland, a pole mount bracket, and a pack of four M6 flange screws. First, we'll look at the center feed tube. On the rear of the tube, there are two ports. This is the main gigabit ethernet port, which is used to provide power and communications for the unit. The second port outputs the alignment tone, which can be used to precisely aim the dish during installation. Note that the alignment port accepts a standard 3.5 millimeter audio jack for direct connection of a pair of headphones. On the side of the tube, there is a row of LEDs which indicate power applied, session status, sync status, and link speed and activity. Having familiarized ourselves with the components, next we'll see how to assemble the subscriber unit. Assembly requires the use of a 13 millimeter wrench and an M5 hex driver. A torque wrench is optional, but recommended. First, attach the rear mounting bracket to the reflector dish. There is a plastic molding on the front of the bracket that clips into the dish. Make sure that you orient the bracket to fit the keyway slot on the dish. The clips can be a little stiff, so it is helpful to insert the M6 flange screws into the rear mounting bracket holes to keep everything aligned correctly. Loosely tighten the screws by hand. Lay the dish on a flat surface and press down on the bracket until it clicks into place. Check that all of the clips are fully engaged. The flange screws should now be tightened with the M5 hex driver, firmly securing the dish to the bracket. Torque these screws to 10 Newton meters. Next, we'll attach the pole mount bracket. Remove the two supplied M8 bolts from the bracket with a 13 millimeter wrench. Then align the pole bracket with the rear bracket and insert the bolts. The bracket is designed to allow up to 20 degrees of tilt in each direction. Now attach the center feed tube to the dish assembly. Insert the tube through the center hole, making sure that the flat side of the tube lines up with the equivalent part of the receptacle in the rear mount bracket. Check that the tube is fully seated in the receptacle before securing it with a captive safety screw on the rear mount bracket. Torque this screw to 5 Newton meters using the M5 hex driver. The PMP450B subscriber unit is now ready for mounting. Here we will demonstrate how to attach the unit to a vertical pole. Loosen off the two M8 nuts on the mounting bolts. Position the unit on the pole, locate the retaining strap, and tighten the M8 nuts against the strap to fix the radio securely to the pole.
Finally, we will install the main RJ45 Ethernet cable using the cable gland provided. Disassemble the gland into its component parts. The rubber seal, compression ring, and the retainer nut. First pass the Ethernet cable through the retainer nut, followed by the compression ring, and then the sealed cover. Plug the Ethernet cable into the main port of the subscriber unit. The radio should power up. Note that if you plan to use the alignment tone feature to aim the radio, alignment should be performed now prior to installing the cover and gland. The alignment tone port is not accessible once the gland is installed. Loosely install the sealed cable cover, engage the built-in locating guides, and slide the cover into place. Tighten the captive screws a few turns with the M5 hex driver to keep the cover in position. Install the two halves of the rubber seal around the cable close to the body of the gland. Then push the seal into the gland body as far as it will go. Slide the compression ring onto the rubber seal and press it into place. It should seat against the gland body. Then thread the retaining nut onto the gland a few turns. Finish tightening the cable cover screws using the M5 hex driver. Torque the screws to 5 newton meters, then tighten the retaining nut to form a good seal around the cable. I hope that this video has been informative and I want to thank you for watching.